Hey folks, this is Riker with a video on Diablo 4's ongoing Halloween event. In this video, we're going to tell you how to get the most out of this event and also answer whether it's worth participating in this event. And we're going to start by answering that second question right away. Not going to make you wait for the whole video for that. The event can be broken down into three parts, an XP buff, cosmetics, and the meet or treat event. The XP buff was a surprise. We all have a 35% multiplicative XP buff and a 50% uh, gold find buff. So for that alone, yes, it is worth playing during these days, October 29th through November 5th. We're going to have this buff active. Second part, the cosmetics. It's worth logging in just to claim those free cosmetics. There's a different cosmetic to claim every day from October 29th through November 1st. And if you miss any days, then you can just log in on November 5th and claim all the cosmetics. So you can skip every day and just go November 5th and get them all at once. Then lastly, the meet or treat event. Is this worth going out of your way for? The answer in short is no. So those are the short answers. Now we're going to expand on all this as we go deeper into the video. But before we talk more about Diablo 4's Halloween event, we'll take a moment to talk about this video's sponsor, who is having an event of their own. Tarasland, an MMORPG we've spoken about before, available cross-platform on both PC and mobile. Right now, they're rolling out Season 1, The Blight Dragon Elegy. It features a new map, the Scardino Icefield, and if you jump in now, you can follow a quest line to get boosted right to level 40 and instantly start teaming up with others. You can pick from 9 different classes and 18 specializations with a talent tree setup that lets you play around and find a build that really fits your playstyle. This season introduces the first 10 player raid and there's new 5 player dungeons to conquer as well. There's also a mentorship system if you want to help new players learn the ropes while running dungeons and raids together. This season also comes with some pretty solid perks if you're into guild play. Guild leaders who keep things active can get weekly crystals and exclusive rewards. There's 8 cycles in the season in total, and anytime your guild makes the top 100 in one of those cycles, whether you're a guild leader or a member, you'll win rewards, like the Dragon Slayer chests for members and up to 4,000 crystals for leaders. Plus, if you manage to crack into the top 30 guilds, your guild leader can win up to 10,000 crystals, and every member of the top 10 guilds will receive exclusive title images and rare mounts. So go ahead and give Tarasline a download today using the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. Grab your friends, get a guild going, and win those rewards while you can. All right, back to Diablo 4's Halloween event. So we're going to break down more details now about how these events work, the disparate components, how to benefit from them the most, and we'll end with some suggestions on things that could be potentially changed in the future to make people want to engage more with specifically the meter treat. So we'll start with the easy stuff. First off, the XP buff. Now, 35% XP buff that we're all getting. However, it should be noted that it only applies to monster kills, not to the closing XP or the ending XP you get for a pit. When you're running pits, most of the XP you're getting is from completing the pit. That part is not getting multiplied. Does that mean it's not worth running pits? That does not mean that. But depending on what kind of content you're able to crush to generate XP, Infernal Hordes now might be, depending on your situation, more beneficial to run with that 35% XP multiplier. So right now to Paragon grind your way to maximum Paragon, the best thing to do in the game is pits. Uh, we have a video where we spoke about how long it's going to take to max out your, your Paragon and that the best method is doing pits. You want to be doing speed pits, like 90 seconds ideally, and on the highest level that you can handle. Now, this is under the assumption that you're running a Spiritborn and you are crushing content far higher in level than the devs intended. So you are going way above Torment 4. The reason that pits are so good is because we're able to clear so high above Torment 4, we're getting so much XP. If the pit level that you're clearing is closer to Torment 4, well, the closer you get to that, the more Infernal Hordes become a viable alternative. So also, if you're like leveling a new character or something, maybe you're not level 60 yet, maybe you're late to the season, that's okay, no problem. Infernal Hordes now are becoming much more viable with this 35% XP multiplier when all your XP is coming from those hordes, those infernal hordes that you're killing. If you're even lower level, starting off a new character, you don't have access to infernal hordes yet, this makes Helltide now even more of a great place to level. The Blood Maiden in particular, all those enemies that spawn, boss XP is also affected by the 35% XP multiplier. So that covers the XP part. The cosmetics we already said basically as a little hack, you can just 
log in on the last day to claim them all. Um, the cosmetics seem to reset at around 3 p.m., maybe a bit after 3 p.m. every day. So if you're logging in and you're wondering how come you don't see the new cosmetic, wait until a bit after 3 p.m. Eastern. But now the meat of things here, the meet or treat event. So the meet or treat event, anytime you're in a dungeon, nightmare dungeon or otherwise, not in pits, that's the key, only in dungeons and nightmare dungeons, any shrine you encounter is going to be under the holiday effect. When you click it, there's a chance of spawning either a goblin, most likely, or an infernal butcher from the infernal hordes. Meat or treat. So we sought out to determine, is it worth going out of our way to farm these nightmare dungeons to get all the goblins and the butchers and whatever? Is there any way that this would really benefit you by farming this? We did 100 runs, we collected the data, and the answer again is no, but we'll dive into that data. So out of 100 dungeon runs, it does seem that on average, every dungeon will have a shrine. Sometimes you get a dungeon without a shrine. Sometimes you get dungeons with more than one shrine. So it kind of averages out that you're going to get a shrine per dungeon. Sometimes those shrines are cursed shrines. Whether they're cursed shrines or not, they will still spawn either a goblin or a butcher. Out of those 100 runs, we got 23 infernal butchers. So seems roughly a quarter of the time you get the butcher, 75% of the time, three quarters of the time, you get a goblin. And the goblin does seem to be the more rewarding option. Now out of 100 runs, we actually got 100 goblins. You might be wondering, well, how does that make sense? Some of the shrines can spawn multiple goblins. It seems like that's when it's gonna be a cursed shrine. You have a chance that multiple goblins will spawn. We've heard reports of up to three goblins per shrine. So good odds at getting the event to actually happen, great. But how are the rewards? Are these worth farming? And again, we look at the loot drops. And so I was looking at, okay, what are the loot drops we'd really be looking at here? So do they have a higher chance at mythics, for instance? Well, in 100 runs, we actually got one mythic to drop. Probably an outlier. Probably just randomness, but uh, one of us got a, a Shaco, a Harlequin crest to drop. I'm putting that out there. I think it's just an outlier. I think it was just chance, but I'm going to say in 100 runs, we did get one, one mythic to drop. But outside of that, I want to figure out, okay, is this a way to farm ancestrals, especially ancestral legendaries? Because that's something that people are having a lot of trouble with lately. Maybe this is how we can fill out our codex or just farm up our gear for upgrades because a lot of players are still stuck struggling there. And again, the answer seems to be no. Out of 100 runs, we got 49 ancestral legendaries and eight ancestral unique items. That means that it takes, on average, two Nightmare Dungeons to get one ancestral drop or 12 to get one ancestral unique. Certainly not something worth going out of your way for if you're farming ancestrals. Now, one thing to mention here is that when the goblin is killed, he has his little loot explosion and then he drops a treasure bag, which is, hey, great, he drops a treasure bag. Those treasure bags are garbage bags. They have like two items in them, sometimes three, the original Goblin Loot Explosion is so much more impressive that the bag is almost worthless in comparison. I've seen people complain about not being able to stack the bags. You really don't have to be stacking the bags. You're not getting them fast enough. Anytime you find one, just open it right away. It's going to give you two items. It's not a big deal. The Butcher doesn't drop any bags. Uh, it seems that the Butcher might have an Infernal Hordes drop table. I saw him drop some of the Infernal Hordes specific uniques. So if you don't have access to Infernal Hordes and you really need an Infernal Hordes unique, I guess you can do 12 Nightmare Dungeons and hope to get a Butcher and hope that he's going to drop a unique. But uh, again, it's, it's a very impractical and inefficient way to go about things. So we thought, okay, what about runes? Is this a way to farm legendary runes? Some people need those legendary runes to farm up their mythics. No. We got four legendary runes out of 100 runs. That's on average 25 Nightmare Dungeons to get one legendary rune. And I'll specify here as well that... This data is not just from the drops from the goblins, uh, but from, you know, kind of running the Nightmare Dungeon, not fully clearing it, but clearing it enough to check for all the, the shrines to see if we can encounter the event. Now, I'm not going to say it's a total wash. There are a couple of things that I think are worth pursuing here. First off, XP Wells. So we found 20 XP wells out of 100 runs. So it seems on average about 20% of the time, one out of every five Nightmare Dungeon will have an XP well in it. An XP well is going to give you a 15% XP bonus for one hour. And these things stack. So you can get two, three, four, five, a, a large number of hours. And as long as you don't log out of your character, you're going to retain that buff. 
So for that reason alone, I do think it's worth doing Nightmare Dungeons at least to get a buff. And then you go run your XP farm in the pits or in the hordes or wherever it may be. And here's a key tactic. Do this in a party. Four people, you party up, then you break the party and you each go into Nightmare Dungeons, your own separate Nightmare Dungeons, trying to find an XP well. Once one person finds one, you invite everyone into that game. You each click the well and then you split the party again and you go farm up another uh, you know you, you keep doing this until you farm up enough shrine time or xp well time for your farming session right if it's just gonna be an hour then you can do one well but let's say you're planning to play for three hours you know get three wells and then go ham farming up your xp regroup back up and you know do your do your do your pit farming this is something that we're doing this is a tactic that we're using right now to farm our paragon while we're blasting 105 pits now, another caveat I have to say for the rewards that you get from the meter treat event, goblins drop a lot of boss materials. I got to grant that. So theoretically, if you want to be getting like distilled fear or, you know, the, the boss materials that goblins drop, which is not Duriel or Andy, but just those regular boss materials, you can farm up quite a bit of that doing these goblins. Whether that's worth it for you is entirely dependent on whether you need those bosses depending on your state of gearing maybe it's worth it for you overall though the way i see the meter treat event is if you are doing nightmare dungeons anyway this is a nice little bonus it's a nice little treat and for some people farming up their master working mats is more efficient in nightmare dungeons than it is elsewhere so the the best farm for master working materials is the undercity but that's being at the mercy of getting that Undercity key that boosts your Masterworking mats. If you don't have that, well then, Infernal Hordes is traditionally what's best for groups uh, who can be efficient, but if you're not in a group or you don't have the right builds to be really maximizing your Infernal Hordes Obdecide gain, your Masterworking mats gain, then the default is in the Nightmare Dungeon. So, if you're doing up the Nightmare Dungeons anyway, you're getting the Shrines, extra little bonus, it's nice to have. Also, one thing that we should note, it appears as though they've removed, at some point, the Nightmare Dungeon sigil that causes extra shrines to spawn. So don't try to craft one of those, don't look for them. They don't seem to be in the game anymore. Another thing we'll mention here, and not to harp on this too much as we have in the past few videos, man, do conduit shrines feel terrible in this event. On Torment 4, you pop the meter tree shrine, you turn into a conduit. Now you have no you have no choice to you can't avoid the conduit shrine because you want to spawn the meter treat. You turn into that little harmless will-o'-wisp, a goblin spawns, and you can't even kill a goblin. I thought, okay, well, maybe you know, in pits and whatever, I get it that I'm not strong enough. But no, this is just bad for everybody. Even for casual players who have put together their own build, not running a spiritborn, in Torment 4, the conduit shrine can barely tickle a goblin. It takes off like a fifth of its life, if that, by the time it expires. So, uh, nothing we can do about that, but uh, I, I think that, more than anything, proves that Conduit Shrines, something needs to be done with them, if it's just, even if it's just disabling them at Torment 4 for the time being. I've always said that a good judge of a build's power is whether you can take down a goblin in your current level. If you cannot take down a goblin, then you definitely are punching above your, your weight class, and you've got to drop your difficulty. The Conduit Shrine in T4 cannot kill a goblin. Now, we said we'd end with maybe some ideas on how this event could potentially be something that more people would enjoy engaging with. Let me just say right off the bat, like, this event is a positive. It doesn't do anything to detract from the gameplay. It's got that XP bonus for, for the blasters who just want to enjoy an XP grind. And for, you know, more casual players who are experiencing Nightmare Dungeons and they're not, you know, optimizing their play. They just want to have fun. Yeah, it's cool. You know, you have this shrine and you're going to get more goblins. You're going to get more butchers. It's fun. I do think, though, however, at the very least, those treasure bags need to either be, like, removed or buffed. Because it just feels really weird. You kill the goblin, loot explosion, a lot of stuff drops, and there's a treasure bag. And like, ooh, a treasure bag. And it's got, like, two things in it. It just feels very underwhelming right after getting that loot explosion. I would either just make that stuff drop at the same time or buff the treasure bags to drop more stuff. Like right now, I think it actually feels better to just not have the treasure bag. And I'd love to say for the Butcher, make him so much more powerful, but then like we're basically killing hardcore players. We're basically telling hardcore players, don't log in during these five days, don't do Nightmare Dungeons. So uh, I get that you can't, you can't have something too crazy and unexpected happen. But how about make that Butcher drop a 
key for infernal hordes you know maybe it's a way to farm up infernal hordes keys because right now we have no deterministic way to farm up infernal hordes keys infernal hordes i think if the game were in a good state of balance infernal hordes would be the best activity to do right now pits are oftentimes better for xp grind simply because of the overpowered nature of the spirit born i think on most other classes for the average player infernal hordes is going to be a better xp grind and the reason that's a good state of game balance is that we are limited in how many Infernal Hordes we can do because we cannot craft keys. So you basically, you do your Infernal Hordes until you have none left, and then you engage in the other game activities. And it creates this really good overall gameplay loop. Right now, because we're turbo blasting 105 pits, that's all we do all day. But that's not the fault of the game design. It's the problem with the Spiritborn being bugged and overpowered. Once that's resolved, we're not going to be spending our days doing pits anymore, hopefully, in Season 7. So again, maybe if this was a way for us to farm up those Infernal Hordes keys uh, in a time in which we'd more want to engage in Infernal Hordes, that could be something. And then maybe the Goblins could have a good chance of dropping specific Undercity tributes. Again, that's something else where we're at the mercy out of how many we can run. Maybe it's the Masterworking ones to boot, right? It actually fits into the gameplay loop of we're doing Nightmare Dungeons to get more Masterworking mats, so... Oh, well, now these goblins that we're farming in the Nightmare Dungeons are going to drop the more... They'll be more predisposed, more likely to drop that tribute that has the Undercity Masterworking mats. These are just ideas off the top of my head, folks. But I encourage you to sound off in the chat with your ideas on how to make the event... I mean, obviously, we, we can come up with ideas where the event is more grandiose and, and uh, you know, there's much more to it. But I'm trying to think of what are ways that minimize the effort required from the devs. Because, again, we could have had no event at all. So this is better than nothing. But if we're looking at what are very minimum effort or lower effort things the devs could do to enhance this event, that's just kind of what I'm trying to think of here. Also, folks, if you want some free cosmetics in Diablo 4, from October 8th to November 5th, you can get cosmetics just by watching Twitch streams. There'll be new cosmetics to farm up every week. You gotta watch at least three hours a week to earn the cosmetics of the week. You can watch me at twitch.tv slash Riker. Also during this time period, if you buy or gift two subs, you get this horse, and four subs will get you the horse armor as well. Also folks, we're doing the Patreon banner this year. Anyone who is a Patreon supporter by October 31st at patreon.com slash Riker, even at the $1 pledge, will get your name on the shirt. That's going to wrap up this video, folks. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my supporters. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.